Yo, what's going on everybody? It's straight out of Boston here, and today I'm back for episode number two of my Brooklyn Nets My League series here in NBA 2K16. Here are the sliders I'm going to be using for this video. I'll talk about that in a sec, but I have a series of small moves I'm going to be making here. I'm going to flip Walter Tavares for Elliot Williams and a second round pick. Then I'm going to trade Elliot Williams for Devin Marble. This trade I did because I wanted to cut this roster spot, so I just wanted to try and find the lowest contract possible. I'm going to end up releasing both Quincy Miller and Devin Marble. I'm going to pick up Jakar Sampson, who in real life was undrafted and actually signed with the Sixers in the Summer League, and then I think he has an NBA contract with him right now. Now we're also going to sign Sim Bular or Bueller. I think it's Bueller, but I'm not 100% sure. Bueller, I don't even know. Um, and then we're also going to trade Donald Sloan. I got this trade offer for a first round pick from the Chicago Bulls, but I decided that was a little bit unfair for Donald Sloan, so I turned it into two seconds instead. I thought that was a bit more realistic. We also pick up Cameron Bears, though, who I think is in my reserves. But I wanted to pick up Bueller uh, and a Jakar Sampson because I thought those were two guys who. Uh, could have a chance of being the roster in the future, and I just thought they were worth roster spots more than Walter Tavares or, you know, Quincy Miller. And then I just traded Donald Sloan because I wanted to get uh, Shane Larkin some more minutes. I figure Sloan's probably not going to be, be on the team past this season, so, uh, and, you know, Shane Larkin might be. So I, I wanted to see what Shane Larkin can do in, in a role of a backup point guard. But anyway, let me address the sliders uh, that I'm using for this episode. I f honestly forget what the name are, what the name is. Um, I don't think they have, like, an actual name, but I got them from Operation Sports. I'm going to leave the link to the thread in the description so you guys can check out the sliders if you want. Um, I'll talk about how the game went in terms of the sliders uh, in a sec, but I just want to say that I'm probably going to be using most of Season 1 to do slider testing um, and just really try to find a set that I enjoy. Um, and I know a couple of you guys recommended some in the comment section the last episode. I'll definitely be checking those out at some point. Like I said, I'm probably going to be using different sliders really throughout the entire first season. So oh, also check out that sweet bounce pass from Jared Jack. But anyway, um... Yeah, so these ones I thought were pretty good. Uh, they sort of slowed the game down a little bit, mucked it up a little bit. It was definitely harder to score, um, and it really made you work for your baskets. You had to get good opportunities and good looks if you wanted to score. Um, although Joe Johnson going to the rim right there for the and one. So I liked these, um, but I do sort of want to test, you know, because I, I really don't know how this game plays when you adjust the sliders too much. So that's why I want, even though I did like these sliders, I want to keep trying out different sets and see how the game reacts to different uh, different. You know, just different sets of sliders and see see how the game feels. Um, but anyway, let me get into the gameplay here. So we're taking on the Boston Celtics, and you can see one of the newest Boston Celtics, David Lee, there getting in on the action with the putback. And it's a 17 to 17 game. So we came off of uh, that winning against the Bulls on opening night, and we ended up winning three straight more games, and actually started out five and one all in all, including back to back victories over the Spurs and Grizzlies on back to back nights. That's pretty impressive. But uh, we've lost six in a row since then, so we're five and seven entering this game, six game skid as. I mentioned we're trying to get out of that. It's a 24 to 23 ball game here early on in the second quarter. Evan Turner pops a three. He drains that one. He would actually go three of three from downtown this game, which surprised me a little bit because part of the slider set was lowering both the user and CPU uh, three point shot success rate. And Evan Turner still went three for three. So I don't know what that's about, but whatever. 31 28. Now here's Kelly Olenek going into the lane. He is going to get that one to go. Five point game now. And here come the Celtics once again. It's a seven point game. Turner drives, kicks it out to Avery Bradley. Actually, Olenek or David. Excuse me, I got all the white guys confused on the Celtics. Uh, David Lee's the one to kick that out into a three-pointer for Bradley, so a 10-point game now. But a nice backdoor cut from Bojan Bogdanovic, and he will end the run there. And now Bueller's at the line. He's going to miss his free throw, but Joe Johnson is there, and he gets the and one to go. So a big three-point opportunity. He would not convert, though, so it's still a six-point game. Here come the Celtics other way down. Turner, great pass to Bradley under the basket. Left-handed layup is good. Eight-point game once again. Now it's up to ten. But here comes Larkin into the lane. Behind the back pass to Robinson. Now to Bogdanovich for three. He nails it. So we get the lead back down to seven. Now here is Bradley coming around the screen from Tyler Zeller. Kicks it out to Lee to Turner. And I already uh, spoiled that one for you guys because I mentioned he went three of three from three today. So he nails that one. Ten-point lead once again. And then a turn over from Joe Johnson. Great pass to David Lee, who's under the basket. Makes it a 12-point lead. Biggest lead of the night for either squad. But it's Thomas Robinson down low in the pick and roll and one. That was a nice three-point play. It would get the game back to nine, and that would be the score entering the half. Jakar Sampson's layup is no good as the clock hits zero. So we are at the half now. It's 53-44. to 44. And like I said, we're struggling to score a little bit. As I mentioned earlier in the episode, uh, these sliders definitely made it harder to score, which I kind of liked. Um, it can be a little easy to score in NBA 2K if you sort of know 
Well, if you just sort of know how to play the game, like I've been playing 2K for years and I sort of know how to get easy baskets. But uh, it's a nine-point game. Now here's Terry Rozier who got the start today. I believe Isaiah Thomas was banged up. Uh, I heard in the broadcast that he had to get carted off last game. So um, I believe he's going to be out for a while. That's why Terry Rozier got the start, and that's why you're not seeing Isaiah Thomas in this episode. But Johnson to the hoop gets the contact layup. Now it's Sullinger driving to the hoop, and you can't do that if you're a big man. So Johnson's going to pick him. And here we go on the break, bringing it down. Johnson looking for the pass right to Brooke Lopez who gets the layup. And Lopez had another big game today. You will see he really stepped it up in the fourth quarter. It's Jay Crowder's turn. Mid-range, he gets it to go 59-48. It's an 11-point lead. The Celtics lead holding steady here. Nets trying to make a run but can't really seem to get any momentum. It's Thad Young with the mid-range jumper, and that will go. And I want to talk about Brooke Lopez here for a moment. Uh, I got some good feedback on my ideas around trading him or keeping him. Um, and I really mentioned in the, last ep in the last episode that I think I want to trade him, but I've actually opened my mind to keeping him. Um, he's really impressed me in the two games that we've played, especially on the defensive end. He uh, is a really good defender, at least when I use him. And I don't know if that's going to show up in the simulation. And, you know, I'm not saying that's accurate of real life. But when I've used him, he's played good defense. And somebody made this point in the comment section. But, you know, it's really going to be hard to find a post scorer as good as Brooke Lopez because he is really one of the best in the game. And that is an ability that I do like to have. Um, you know, I mentioned before how I like to play a running gun kind of style and get out in the fast break. Oh, and take a look at this play. Tyler Zeller, well, I don't know why he's not getting back on defense because Lopez is wide open. He's going to go to the basket easily. But uh, anyway, like I said, I like to play a running game sort of style and that doesn't really fit Lopez. You know, he's sort of a slow plotting big man who's better in the half court. But at the same time, it is important to win games in multiple in multiple ways, especially when it comes time to the playoffs and you're not going to be able to get out in the break as much. And, you know, it, it does help to have a guy who can really score effectively in the half court. So I think Lopez sort of does fit that. And I'm a little bit more open to keeping him than I was, you know, 48 hours ago, 72 hours ago, whenever I posted the uh, the last episode. But anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. So uh, I'm still unsure of what I'm going to do with him. But now, certainly, I would say I'm more open than I was in the last episode. But we've got a five-point game now. Eleni's going to get that layup to go. It's back up to seven. But we're closing down the lead a little bit here in the fourth quarter. Now, here comes Jared Jack bringing it up the court. And Joe Johnson, backdoor cut. No one picked him up. I think they tried to double-team Jack there. I don't know why. But it's a five-point game. And then Jack, you know, I didn't even mean to pass this to Johnson. But fadeaway three in the corner. And he gets it to go. I tried to get that to uh, Thad Young, but instead it goes to Johnson, and he actually nails the three. And then Johnson is going to draw the foul here, and he would go to the line and knock down both free throws, and we would tie this game up. So a nice little run here from the Nets. And then here comes Brooke Lopez. Look at this. They're double-teaming in the post, but it does not matter. And I really wanted to take advantage of this game. Uh, the Celtics bigs really are not good defensively. I don't think they have one above-average defensive big man. So I really took advantage with Lopez, and he had a big night. But here it's 82-82. Olenek with it gives it to Evan Turner in the corner. And this one is good. It's third three of the night, and it's a three-point lead for the Celtics. That's a big bucket, but now still a three-point game. Here comes Wayne Ellington on the fast break. No field goals yet tonight, but he gets a ridiculously tough shot over Kelly Olenek. Gets it back to a one-point game. Now here comes Johnson. He's going to slow things down. We're going to get it to Thad Young. Back over to Jarek Jack, but it's intercepted by Terry Rozier. So here come the Celtics next time down. It's Bradley to turn. Turner, Evan Turner back to David Lee. He gets fouled. He would go to the line and make both. Now a three-point game once again. So I'm going to try and get this ball into the hands of my two best players, Joe Johnson and Brooke Lopez. I try to go for a pick and roll, but look at the defense. Evan Turner's playing. I can't get around him. Trying to get to the basket. Pump fake. Back to Thomas Robinson for the jumper. No good. That will rattle off. So Olenek with the rebound. Now Celtics next time down. It's Turner. Gives it to Bradley in the corner. Wide open. 3-0. Oh, it's no good. A big miss from Avery Bradley. It's still a one-possession game. Here comes the Nets. Johnson on the break to Lopez. Layup is good, and it's a one-point game. Once again, 33 seconds to play. Now Celtics trying to inbound. Bradley tries to go down the court, but it's over the head of David Lee, and it's the Nets. Ball, a terrible turnover for Avery Bradley. Now time winding down here. Lopez with the ball, and he gets it to go. Nets have the lead. 10.7 seconds left. A huge bucket. Now Celtics, one last chance. Rozier's three is blocked. Bradley gets it back at half court. Three seconds left. He's going to have to put one up. No good in the Nets complete the come from behind victory. 88 to 87 is your final thanks in large part to Brooke Lopez and Joe Johnson. You'll see it in the box score, but Johnson had 17 points in the fourth quarter. I'm not sure how many Lopez had, but he had a bunch as well, and he finished with 30 on the night. He would get your player of the game, as you guys will see later. But take a look at the team stats here. We hold the Celtics to 41% from the field. That was pretty nice. We shoot 48% ourselves. And then Lopez, 30 and 11. Johnson, 28 and 8 with four assists. Lopez also threw in four blocks there, both relatively efficient nights. And then, really, they carried the load offensively. And then Avery Bradley had a horrible game for the Celtics. Seven points on three of 16 shooting. But that is going to do it. So thank you guys for watching. I'm going to leave you guys with the 2K postgame show. And I'm out. Peace.
Hi again, everybody. This is Ernie Johnson, joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Time now to present our Jordan player of the game, Brooke Lopez. He had an outstanding third quarter. Whatever they needed in terms of energy and offense, he was the firepower that propelled them during the second half. His play tonight, Ernie, was finally a bright spot for them because, you know, they had a very rough stretch of games. It's been a while since their last win, and he was not content on playing a supporting role and letting them lose another one. He came on strong, took over, and put an end to the losing streak. Just a dominant display by Brook Lopez in the post tonight. Lopez is a threat on multiple levels. His offense is always going to be there, but his defense isn't far behind. And I don't think he gets enough credit for his rebounding either. He's solid all around. And that'll do it for tonight. For Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Harlan, and our illustrious 2K Sports crew, this is Ernie Johnson. Have a good night, everybody.